Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie coming at you with yet another tutorial in the process management series. Today, we are going to look at the PROC file system. Okay, so y'all probably saying, okay, what is this PROC file system business? And why do we need to know about it? Well, first off, it's actually a virtual file system. And we call it that because it's one of those things that's kind of there, but it's not really there. If we were to take this hard drive out of this computer and mount it into another computer as its secondary drive and just look at the file system, we would see this proc directory there, but we would not see anything inside of it. That's because since it's a virtual file system, it gets built from scratch every time we boot the machine. So it exists in memory as long as the machine is running. I mean, it exists in RAM, I should more accurately say. And when you shut the machine down, it all just disappears. It all goes away. The only thing left will be the directory itself, which is used as a mount point. So we can go in there. And we see a whole lot of these numbered directories. So we have these directories that have numbers as their names, and each one of these numbers corresponds to a process ID number of a process that is running on the system. And if we were to do like this, we see there that most of these different directories belong to the root user but we also have some that belong to other users. So you see down here at the bottom, we have uh, one that belongs to Dbus user and one that belongs to the Crony user. And we even have some that belong to this Donnie character and a few other system users in there as well. But most of the stuff does belong to the root user. Now, you also have all these other files and directories over here that have names instead of numbers, but we're not going to really talk about them too much in this video because these files and directories that have names actually, you know, have more to do with kernel processes than they do with our user processes. So we do have a, a few different things over here which are accessed when we do a top or a htop command when we look at the system memory and CPU usage and all like that. But, uh, but for the most part, we're not going to use that in our process management. And I do have a couple of other videos and another, another playlist that you know, deal with some of the utilities that we can use to look at the information over here. I will link to them at the end page of this video. But for right now, what we're really concerned with is these numbered directories over here. And so we have up here at the very top, we have number one. And as you might guess, that goes with process ID number one, which is going to be the system D process, since this is a CentOS system here that we're looking at on another Linux distro that might be called the init process. But either way, we can go in there. By the way, if you hear strange noises, that is just my Caitlin, who is my 14-year-old little calico kitty coming out from behind the monitor. But anyway, we can do like this, and we can see a bunch of things in here, a bunch of these pseudo files that will give us information here about these different processes. And we can do like this. And we can see here that most of the stuff, well, everything in here belongs to the root user because this process belongs to the root user. And we see a lot of stuff in there that has read permissions only for the root user. And some of it has read permissions for everybody. And for the stuff that you can look at, you can just do a cat command. 
And for example, we can take a look at AT. Well, that's a directory. Let's look at auto group. Okay. And you see there, uh, it's not really telling us a whole lot. It just says it's nice zero. It has a niceness value of zero. And we have a lot of other stuff in there as well. I can't go over each and every item in here, but what I can do is show you the proc man page. So yes, we have a man page for proc. And if you go in here, it's going to tell you about all these different items and what they're telling us. So here at the top, we see there proc and PID in the square brackets. So we could go into the PID directory there for a certain process. And that tells us what that is. It's just a numerical subdirectory for each running process. And the subdirectory is named by the process ID. Well, we already know about that, right? We already looked at that. And then each such subdirectory contains the following pseudo files and directories. And then it tells us all about these other items in here. So we can go in here and we can look at all these different items. And it will tell us what they are. So your homework assignment is to read the man page <laughs> if you really want to, right? And of course, you know, a lot of this stuff, you know, you don't need to come in here and really worry about trying to look at it because you're going to get this information with either the PS command or the top command or H top command anyway. But still, it's good to be familiar with what is in here. And then once you get on down past this process ID stuff, you'll finally get into the other stuff on the other side with the that has to do with the kernel processes. But you see, you got a lot of stuff there that is in or can be in those process ID subdirectories. Anyway, I think that's good enough for now. Let's go ahead and get out of that. And let's look at a few other interesting things in here. Actually, Okay, so we can look at this stuff here, and we also see that these things, since they are pseudo files, not real files, you see that they have a size of zero. That's because they are not taking up any space on the drive. They're in memory only. Okay, and then you can also we can also do this. Let's go back up here to the top level to the proc. And we can also look for directories. And let me do that again. I keep doing that. There we go. We can also look for things that belong to me. And so, for example, number 665 belongs to me. Number 783 belongs to me. So let's look at 665, because I really don't know what that is. OK, and so we have that. And actually, well, you see, most of the stuff still belongs to root. And some of it belongs to the Donnie group or associate with the Donnie group, but everything still belongs to the root user. Okay. But anyway, so much for that, right? Now, I'm going to show you something over here. I'm going to show you over here on this Debian machine that I have. Actually, this is a Raspberry Pi running Debian. And so, I'm going to do PSAUX here. And whoa, I'm supposed to see all processes for all users like that, right? Well, it's only showing me just the stuff that belongs to me. Now, I'll come over here 
on the CentOS machine. And yeah, that's showing me everybody. Okay, so what's going on? What's going on with that Debian machine? Well, let me show you. This is cool. You're going to like this, okay? We go into the Etsy directory. And we're going to do Vim FS tab, like so. Okay, now, you see here, I have added a line to the FS tab file. So, it's going to be proc mounted on the proc directory of type proc and I put this really interesting little option in here hide PID equals 2 so hide PID equals 2 means that only the root user can see other people's processes so if you log in as just a normal user you can only see your own processes so if you want to see other people's processes with a PS command or a top command, or even if you CD into the proc directory, you have to have root privileges. So that's pretty cool, right? So you put that line in there and remount the file system, reboot the drive, and hey, you're hiding other people's processes. And that can be handy because let's say you got a, a machine, some sort of server where everybody and his brother is logging into, maybe you don't want for everybody to see everybody else's processes. Also, by hiding the processes, you make it harder for attackers to be able to figure out what's really going on with the system if they happen to breach the system and just get into some normal user account it makes it a little bit harder for them to try to figure out what is going on with the system so that they'll know better how to attack it, so that they'll know better how to compromise the system and try to escalate their privileges to those of the root user. So that's pretty cool, right? Now over here on our CentOS, we can go into the Etsy directory and we can look at our FS tab file. And we can see that that line is not there at all in this one. So let's go ahead here and let's see here what we can do if, if this will actually work in this FS tab file as well. And I'm saying that because I'm kind of going without a net here because I have not tried this with CentOS. So let's see. Okay, so we got that typed in. So let's reboot, see what we got. And I'm going to pause the recording while this is rebooting. Be back in a moment. Okay, I have rebooted and it booted up okay. So now I do PSAUX. And looky there. All I'm seeing is just my own stuff. But if I do sudo PSAUX, I should see everything. Yep, there you go. And same thing for top. I'm only seeing my stuff. But if I do sudo top, yep, then I see everything, All right? So it works pretty cool. So I've just now proven that it works on CentOS as well as on Debian. And of course, it should work on any Linux operating system. So yeah, there you have it. So just a little extra security that you can add to your servers. And I mean, if you're on your own uh, your home desktop machine, you probably don't need to worry about this. But uh, if you got a machine, 
that's accessible from the network. Uh, let's say it's a corporate server or even a corporate desktop machine. You, then, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. And if you're running Linux on some sort of a, a, uh, an internet connected, internet of things device, then you definitely want to do that. Definitely hide those processes. So, yeah, uh, it's pretty cool stuff, right? So anyway, I think that's all for now. As I said, I'll link to these other videos for the kernel mode stuff in the end screen of this video. You should see them popping up at any time. And I do thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.